Hey everyone, uh, so we're going to continue, continue with the 2012 Maths 2 unit paper and we're going to get stuck into question 12. Alright, part A. Part A is all about differentiation. It's asking me to differentiate, uh, might as well say y is equal to x minus 1 and ln x. Okay, now the easy, like you might be thinking use product rule, but I personally think it might actually be easier to expand this and then do it. Uh, so expanding this, I will get x ln x minus ln x. So over here now I have to do a product rule. Anyway, either way, it should be fine even if you just do that as a product rule. So I will end up getting y dash is equal to, so differentiating this bit, I will go. So I'll start off with leaving x alone and then differentiate ln x, I will get one on x, right? And then plus, now I differentiated ln x, I will leave ln x alone and then uh, differentiate x, which is just 1. So it's multiplied by 1, so I'm not really going to write anything. Okay, and then the last thing is simply going ln x differentiated, which I will get minus 1 on x. So our final solution is going to be uh, 1 plus ln x minus 1 on x. Okay. Uh, that's so that, that was just part one of that. Part two. Part two is asking me to differentiate y is equal to uh, cos x on x squared. All right, now you should start remembering your quotient rules. Uh, if you don't, if you're not too familiar with this, I'm going to write this on the side. Uh, y dash is equal to b squared on b u dash minus u, right? Okay, so th there you go, th that's a quotient rule. All right, so now to solve it. Now remember, like personally, the way that I do it is straight away I square the bottom, right? So I will get x to the four. And at the top, the first thing that I write is, is this term. So I'm just gonna copy it up to the top, start off copying it to the top. And then I differentiate this guy. So cos x differentiated is, remember, minus sine x. All right, now that I differentiate cos, I'm going to leave it alone. Um, so, but I have so I have minus cos x. You just remember there's this minus term in the middle uh, times x squared differentiated, which is oh, that's supposed to be a dot two x. Okay, let's tidy this up a bit. So I basically have uh, sorry, this this was in my x squared and cos two x. Okay, uh, now what I can take it, do is take x outside. In fact, I'll take, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave x outside. So inside I will have minus x sine x. And over here I will have minus 2 cos x. All divided by x to the 4. And so simplifying this a bit, I will end up with, so x and x to the 4, that will become x cubed. And now I have minus x sine x minus 2 cos x. Okay, so that's that part done. Okay, let's move on. Part B. So part B is now asking me to integrate. So integrate 4x on x squared plus 6. Now whenever you see a fraction and with integration and both the top the numerator and the denominator have x terms in them you should ask yourself is this going to be a log and in this case yes it is right because if you look at this x squared differentiated x squared differentiated gives me 2x right so it's almost the same as that so what i can do is write this as integral of 2 times 2x and then x squared plus 6 at the bottom. Right? So, remember how to, um, how to differentiate a log? A log, if it was, okay, so this is a side question. If I have y is equal to log, uh, say, I don't know, uh, x to the 3 plus 6, right? y dash is going to be x to the 3 plus 6 goes to the bottom, right? And the top is simply going to be 
this thing differentiated, right? x3 differentiate, x3 plus 6 differentiate, which is 3x squared. So looking at this, this is this is simply a log of, in this case, x squared plus 6. Right? Now just don't forget to write the plus c, okay? So you might just lose half, lose half a mark if you don't. All right, part c. Okay, I hope you can see it on the side. It's looking at this uh, little almost triangle shape, right? So it, it looks something like this. I know that was a really bad drawing, but I hope you get the idea. So what, what's what been done is a, this, this uh, bit of a tile shape. And in each row, so each row this pattern is going to continue. So there's, there's three of them over here. There's going to be one, two, three, four, five. And each row there's two two more tiles than, than the previous one. Okay, so this is going to be seven and so on. Uh, okay, so what is it saying? The pattern has three tiles in the first, five uh, in the second, and two more. Okay, and so on. So how many tiles would J use in the 20th row? Okay, so in row 20, we need to figure out how many tiles they're going to be. Now this is just a geometric series, right? So if you if you want me to write down the formula, the formula goes T n is equal to a plus n minus one d, right? Where in this in in our case a is equal to three, d is equal to two. Now I'd, I'd rather you not remember these formulas and just think about it intuitively, right? So the twentieth the twentieth term is simply going to be the original plus 19 increments of 2. Okay, so 19 increments of 2 tiles. All right, so simplifying this, uh, so 19 times 2, what is that? That's going to be 38. 38 plus 30, I will get 68. Okay, so that I'll, get, I'll have 68 rows. Um, okay, how many tiles would J use altogether to make the first 20 rows? Okay, so for this one, so for part two, I need to calculate the sum. Now I suppose the sum, uh, I guess it's okay to remember formula, formulas, but it goes n on two, a plus l. Right? n is equal to 20, okay, because there's 20 rows, on two. My first term, the original, was simply three, and then the last term that I had was 68. Okay, so 68. So now we make that a 10. And so what now what I have is 71 times 71 times 10, which is 710. Okay, so we need to use 710. Uh, okay. Part 3. Now, the saying that J has only he has only 200 tiles, right? How many how many complete rows can J make? So I guess what the question is uh, question is asking is when is my sum less than 200? So the question is when, right? So rewriting this, rewriting my equation out, n on two. So I guess I need what we need to find is this n. A plus L has to be less than 200. Let me choose another color. Okay, now I know what um, A is going to be, 3. But this L, the L term, I don't know what the L term is going to be. So I'm going to write the, the general general way of doing this. So it's going to be, uh, sorry, I should probably write it here. It's going to be A plus N minus 1D, right? Because L is, again, just the nth term, right? So I, I don't know what n is, but it's it's the nth term. So anyway, so writing out what it is, a is 3, d is 2, so it'll be 3 plus n minus 1 times 2. Has to be less than 200. Now I got an inequality with just one unknown, right? So n is my unknown. So I'll, 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 I'll need to... Um, I guess expand this and see, see what I get, just clean this up a bit. Um, so I have n on 2, and then I have 6, 
plus uh, 2n minus 2 has to be less than 200. I'm going to take this 2 to the other side, so that will become, uh, and I'm going to expand this bracket out. So, uh, oh, sorry. I, I suppose I should mention that this, this term, I can simplify this out to be n on 2, uh, 4 plus 2n is less than 200. And now this 2, I can divide with what's inside. I don't know, 2 over there, and then that, that's gone. Okay, so yeah, I didn't have to remove the 2. Uh, and now I will expand the brackets out, so I will end up getting 2n plus n squared has to be less than 200. Okay, and what is this? This is simply a quadratic. n squared plus 2n is minus 200 is less than 0. Okay, um, now the best way to go about doing this is to uh, graph it, right? So, um, and if you can... Okay, sorry about that. So, so let's come back to this. So I have this uh, inequality that I need to solve. n squared plus 2n minus 200 is less than 0. Uh, the f with these inequalities, what I usually do is graph them, right? So it's a smiley face parabola, and I just need to find these two points, right? And when I put it into the to the quadratic, uh, the minus b plus or minus uh, quadratic formula, this is what I get, right? Now, the the solution on this side is going to be thirteen point one seven, and I'm not going to actually bother with uh, this this side at all, right? The reason is n is a the number of rows, so it can't be a negative number, right? So that's why I'm only going to worry about thirteen point one seven. So if n is going to be 13.17, uh, we're actually going to say n is going to be equal to 13. Even if, even if n was equal to 13.57, we're going to round it down because the thing is, as soon as it's 14 rows, it's going to go above 200, right? So the question was asking, if I only had 200 tiles, remember it doesn't matter how much you round up, I need I, the maximum I can use is just 200 so therefore you always need to round down okay so there's only 13 rows that I can make also I made one big mistake uh, and the, I'll just come back I'll just come back to that uh, and it was over here so I mistakenly said it was 30 whereas it, whereas it should have just been 3 so this number over here should have simply been uh, 3 plus 38 so that's going to be 41 Right, and one more mistake that I made was thanks to this carrying forward, was this 41 should have been should be replacing this, right? So it's not 710, it should be uh, 440. Okay, so yeah, uh, that's that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, let me know. But uh, thanks for watching.